Next up, we're doing the bulkheads. And uh, hopefully we can install those today. So, I went up into the boat, took out the old bulkhead in front of the uh, aft bathroom, and this is gonna be a replacement because we want one that goes all the way across, and then we will cut the uh, appropriate hole for the access. Um, this will replace that, and what I'm doing here is I'm creating a recess along the edge so that where they butt together, we can put a strip of six inch fiberglass uh, or two over the top of them to make them super duper strong. Put thick epoxy down the seam as well. So, hopefully this fits. We'll go up test fit it here in just a little bit. Wrestling this thing in place was not easy, but this bulkhead is, is pretty much set. I have it secured to the cross beam up there, and now I'm going to secure it to this old platform down here with screws. These will be temporary, we just want something well, right where we want it to be, and then we'll glass it in. I'm gonna put a couple screws in this side and I've got a couple screws at the top and that should get it exactly where we want it to be. I have leveled it. It is level both this way and level this way. Luckily so is the boat, so that means we should be nice and square. Getting things square in a boat is virtually impossible. I hope I've done a good enough job here, but I'm sure as I progress um, with the finished carpentry and things, all my Closes and almost good enough will you know reveal themselves. I'm gonna put one more screw in here just to make sure that we've got it exactly where we want it to be, and then it'll be blast time. Drilling an oversized hole through the actual bulkhead so that the screw grabs onto the um, substrate behind it nice and tight. That, we've got a bulkhead where it's supposed to be. Remembering that this will be a glassed butt joint that will go clear across here with a cutout notch to climb into bed. But it's the way Kelly wants it. She wants a nice cozy little space. And you see how on this end it, the bubble rides the right side and you go down here and it's less so. The boat as a whole kind of rides that back side of the bubble. I don't know if you can see it. So down here, it seems nice and straight. There's like a bow in it. And then as we get higher up here, it gets worse. This, if you see the old glass lines, is what the old one was tabbed into. So I'm going to push this over and put a screw in here too, just to make sure that we've got it exactly where we want it to be. But it looks like it kind of bubbles aft in the middle. So I want to push that nice and tight up against it and then we'll glass it in place on the other side. Once that hardens, we'll cut this off and glass it in over here and it will look real nice. This one with the notch on it and the sanding of hole shape on this side goes opposite of the one we're going to start with. So I'm just going to set this guy aside. This is the guy we're looking for. And I figure we'll put a support right in about in the middle of here, in the middle of here. And the reason we're doing that is this, we need something to hold this in place while I uh, blast it in. So we'll get it all nice and level and then screw it to the other bulkhead, which is already in place. And then we'll glass them both in and remove the screws and repair, repair the damage. So, let me go get those sticks and get going. Okay, to do this properly requires three steps. The 
first is we screw a pilot hole through both this and into this. And the second is we extend the size of this pilot hole big enough so the screw just drops through. That makes this nice and tight. These guys are exactly 26 and 1 quarter inch, which accommodates the 3 quarter inch bulkhead and makes each bulkhead 27 inches apart. See how well it works. Theoretically, this should put us lined up quite nicely with these markings. But of course, it really doesn't. Why does this one seem closer? I needed some help. I got this one in just fine, the lower one, but I need your help, Kelly, if you would come over here. I drag Kelly out of the shower. Yeah. Um, and then just hold. You see that square with a hole in it? Yeah. It lines up with that piece of wood. When you got it kind of there and keep maintain it at the line up here, mm -hmm. then we're golden. Just let me know and I'll put the screws. Okay, make sure it's lined up on the top. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Uh, something's not going right here. I'm trying to do all this to avoid screwing into the hole. This is about exactly where I want it. I am simply to temporarily put a screw in. Okay, as long as it doesn't move from there, I'm going to go make some thickened epoxy and do it in place and hope that it holds. All right, let's mix up some thickened epoxy. And stick those suckers in place. I have this box, which is fairly insulative, but then I also have two heating pads on the bottom that keeps the stuff flowing. This, on the other hand, is completely cool, so it doesn't flow as well. We have 14 pumps of epoxy, and here is the hardener. See the difference? So exciting. I'm illustrating the point, how much the harder it is to pump this. Because it's not warm. Five. Plus I'm trying to keep track of the count. Six. I have to get to 14 which I previously decided was the maximum amount these will hold. That might not factor in the thickening agent. When you do this, it makes a giant cloud of white. And I mean, like makes you cough. It's like a beer. You don't drink that, kids. Or beer, for that matter. Others, like this stuff, mixes in quite nicely and you can get a little aggressive quickly. We want this to be peanut butter thick thickness, uh, which is going to take quite a bit and it's going to max out this cup. And then we'll put it in a little pastry bag and go squeeze it into place. We just want to make sure that we're filling most of the void around the ill cut bulkheads and making a nice fillet so when we glass it in we get a nice contour rather than a sharp 45 which helps the uh, glass to adhere better. All right it kind of starts off as pancake syrup and then slowly gets thicker and thicker. This might be like the yogurt stage. Who knows? But we want peanut butter. We want it to not really move when we pull up the stick. And not that natural peanut butter crap. Real American peanut butter like Jif. I'm making a mess. I should have realized that when I say that these cups will hold 14 pumps of each, that that doesn't factor in going to a completely thickened state. <coughs> but we're getting pretty close. 
See how that just stays where it is? That's pretty good. I think we're gonna call that. I always take a cup. Take my bike bag. That way you get a nice stable base. It's super easy to look at. We could have probably had a little bit more filler in there, but this is gonna do just fine. We'll call this natural peanut butter steak. We're down at Whole Foods, going to that giant peanut machine and smashing our own at this point. All right, now that we have it like that, we can pick up our little bag. We're gonna need more than one of these. Get it down into the tip. Start where you don't have any epoxy and twist. All right, the bigger the water, the epoxy, the quicker it starts to fire off. So we gotta hustle up there and get this done. I'm gonna check my square before I really get going. Looks pretty good to me. Let's get this show on the road. All right, well, that's just a few fillets. I'm gonna go make another bag of this because we're gonna need plenty. And uh, I will make you watch all this boring stuff. Oh. All right, got some Evercoat. Evercoat is one brand of what amounts to uh, Bondo because I was writing the struggle for us trying to maintain the position of that last bulkhead I was installing. We did eventually get it in and it looks great, but these next couple are gonna be even harder and uh, I may not have Kelly's help. So talk to my boat expert friend, Tom Becker, Becker Enterprises, and uh, he told me to get some, basically Bondo to hold it in place. I guess Bondo hardens very quickly, so you can kind of smear it on the bottom, hold it there for a minute, and then it'll stay put. Then you sand it down a bit and glass around it. And obviously Bondo isn't uh, weather or water resistant, but the epoxy and fiberglass you put around it is. So we're gonna give that a shot. We're gonna just basically stick some globs in place, let that harden, and then uh, come back and glass it in. So I didn't get anywhere near as far as I wanted to this weekend, but I did install those two bulkheads, tab them in on one side each, and uh, that was about it, man. A lot of work for such a little payoff. All right, I'm heading to Tap Plastics to pick up some tabbing tape, which is basically just a fancy fiberglass that's six inches wide, so you can tab things into the hole with. So, the stuff that we're picking up today is basically chop strand mat with a layer of fiberglass, uh, we woven fiberglass on the top. And that's really, really cool because it gives you basically two layers in one. It's nice and thick. So for non-structural membranes, we just need one layer of uh, tabbing to hold things to the hull, call it good. And I really like it. I used it to tab in a couple of holes and I used it all up and now we need more. That was a lot of words. This stuff. See how it has chop strand mat on the back and woven on the top, nice and thick. Works really great too. It conforms to a lot of things. It feels stiff, but as soon as you get it all wetted out, it molds itself to anything. So I thought that looked a little narrow, and that was correct. Actually, that was the four inch wide product. This, however, is the six inch wide product. It is like a buck sixty a foot, no, a yard, so that's three feet. Um, if you buy it individually, but if you buy a whole roll, it's only like a dollar oh eight a yard. So I went for the whole roll, which is just under a hundred bucks, which is 95 yards of material. I don't know if I'm gonna use all of that, but we'll find out, and if not, I'll just give it to someone else. While purchasing extra material and then just giving it away might seem like a waste of resources, I find that if I have 
an abundance on hand, I'm less inclined to be skimpy. And when it comes to structural integrity of your boat, that seems kind of important. So buying the whole roll frees me up to use as much as I feel is appropriate, which I think makes for better construction. And then someone else can use it. Maybe they'll pay me some money for it. Who knows? We'll see.